of all the software transitions we've made in the Linux world, Pipewire has got to be definitely one of the smoothest. A lot smoother than SystemD. There are no Pipewire protest distros. A lot smoother than Pulse Audio, which, when it was first being shipped, was not ready, and distros did not do their research, and it ended up giving it this absolutely terrible reputation. Even Lennart Pottering, the developer of the project, said, Pulse Audio is the software that currently breaks your audio. And we all know, it's been a lot smoother than the Wayland transition. And you know it's been smooth, because basically nobody sits around talking about Pipewire. Not about the benefits, not about the drawbacks, it's just part of your system. So what's there to really talk about? Nobody really talks about the benefits and drawbacks of the GNU core utils. There are other util implementations, but it doesn't matter. Now, there have certainly been issues with Pipewire when it comes to professional audio, certain plugins not working like they should be, certain weird configurations not working exactly the same way, and there have certainly been issues when it comes to Bluetooth audio. But to be fair, Bluetooth audio itself is kind of an issue. But for the most part, it's been completely seamless, and not just seamless, but really, really quick as well. Probably, I would say, two or three years ago is around about when we first started to really hear about Pipewire. And within that time, basically every major distro has adopted Pipewire as the default, and most users on things like Arch Linux, Gen2, more of these, like, do-it-yourself distros, recommend installing Pipewire as your audio system. While Pipewire is certainly good, it's not just because Pipewire is good. I think a big part of that is this transition over to a Wayland desktop where Wayland and Pipewire basically just go hand in hand. If you want to do any sort of screen capture on Wayland, you're going to be using Pipewire. But it also benefits from the fact there's not this massive upheaval of the way we're currently doing things. It is do what we were doing already but do it slightly better with slightly more features. It is a Pulse Audio server. It's a Jack server. It routes all of the Ulster API through this one Pipewire thing, along with adding in additional Pipewire functionality for doing that screen capture stuff. That means we don't need to port applications to it. We don't need these weird shims that, like, redirect things in this kind of janky way. It just works. So, for something that basically just does its job and is mostly universally adopted, you might think that it's at at least its 1.0 release. Well, you'd be mistaken. It recently had its 0.3.81 release. Now, as we've established from the Linux kernel, from GNOME, from modern video games, version numbers and names are just a suggestion and don't really mean that much, and can be completely flipped on their head for seemingly no reason. But it is kind of weird that for more than three whole years, Pipewire has been on 0.3.x. This is starting to feel awfully similar to Linux 2.6.x, which went on a little bit too long. Now, the idea of just calling the next version 1.0 was actually brought up recently. 1.0 release slash Pipewire versioning. Pipewire has been production ready for quite some time already. Can we change its versioning to something more appropriate, i.e. name the next release 1.0.0 or something? Actually, I don't like plain digits any longer. It'd be great if Pipewire adopted year dot release numbering scheme i.e. the first release in 2023 would be 2023.1, the second 2023.2, so on and so forth. Next year, 2024.1, 2024.2, so on and so forth. This way, it's easy to understand whether your Pipewire release is fresh slash up to date or not. Or maybe, if 2023 sounds too big, you could use 23.1, 23.2, it's unlikely that we're using Pipewire in the 22nd century. Never ever, ever make that assumption. I am certain that when X11 was first being developed, they did not think it would still be being used 
50 years later, never assume that your software is not going to be used long into the future. So I'm looking forward to Pipewire adopting it as well. Ultimately, it's up to you, so you may as well dismiss this proposal altogether. This person here isn't like a frequent contributor to Pipewire or maintainer or anything like that. They were just curious about the future of its releases. But someone did reply, a man by the name of Wim Tamens, who is also the developer of Pipewire. 1.0 is planned for later this year. The missing feature before this can happen is a reliable IRQ-based Ultra driver for Pro Audio that matches the latency of Jack. Work is ongoing in this branch right here. Or at least, it was ongoing. Right here we have the release notes for 0.3.81. Let's see some of the highlights. Jack Dbus support is now enabled by default. Okay, don't care. IRQ based scheduling in Ulcer was improved and enabled by default for Pro Audio Profile. It also links the PCMs together to get lower latency. This now matches what Jack does and results in equal latency for Pro Audio Profiles. That sounds like exactly what we are looking for. So with that, this is the first 1.0 release candidate that is API and ABI compatible with previous 0.3.x releases. Seeing as though we're only halfway through October, I would not be surprised if we actually do see a 1.0 release of Pipewire sometime this year. Other projects trying to do big releases, you know, like GIMP for example, I'm a bit wary if they actually manage to get it done, but here, here it's a lot simpler. Also, this whole API and ABI compatible thing is very, very important to pay attention to. This update is not going to be a massive breaking change that's going to break all of your Pulse Audio and all of your Jack applications. It's going to break your Pipewire Session Manager. It's going to break your patch base. No, this is very similar to something like Linux 5.19 becoming Linux 6.0. It sounds like this big exceptional update where a lot of things are going to change but really it's just a change of sort of framing it's really just a regular update with a new name what it does do is makes it very clear what sort of state pipewire is currently in because when you see a version number like 0.3.81 that does not sound like a full, complete release. Yeah, obviously it's going to keep getting updates long into the future, but it doesn't sound like something that's stable and ready to daily drive. 1.0 makes it very clear that this is the thing we are doing with Linux Audio. This is ready to use, and if for whatever reason you haven't swapped over to using it, now is the time to do so. And at least for now, it's basically here to stay. Now, maybe in the future that changes. Maybe in the 22nd century, we are no longer using Pipewire. But I have no idea what's going to happen in the 22nd century. Right now, in 2023, Pipewire is ready to go. It's a seamless drop-in replacement. Just use it. Yeah, there is going to be feature requests. There is going to be bug reports. But... This is just what happens with software, especially if you are still adding in new features, you are probably going to be introducing new bugs. Anytime you touch the code base, there is a chance you are introducing a new bug. This is just what happens. But there is nothing fundamentally wrong with the Pipewire model, at least for what we are trying to achieve with audio today. Maybe someone has a much better solution that they've got in their head and hasn't been implemented yet, but... Nothing like that exists that I'm aware of. Now, because of this whole Pipewire 1.0 thing, there was this amusing post on the Ardor forums. Pipewire 1.0, is it time now? Now, I know the logo looks like an Arch logo. This is not an Arch distro. Ardor is a digital audio workstation, basically the equivalent of a video editor, but for audio. I know that Ardor does not have a direct Pipewire driver, nor it plans to currently. The main argument is that its API is still experimental and is not considered production ready for professional audio. Also, since it currently implements Jack APIs, it maybe will never be the case for supporting a direct driver. That might have changed recently, thanks to the whole 1.0 thing. I think they will stabilize the APIs and finish implementing everything they had envisioned for the first major version. 
I'm curious to know if this would perhaps change the current decision. Maybe this is the time to add Pipewire into the roadmap for a future version of Ardor. I totally understand if this changes nothing, as will be yet another complicated development path. Also, Paul has previously said that we will absolutely not consider a native Pipewire support implementation because of Jack. So the win here is maybe nothing. Now, to be clear, what he actually said was this. We will absolutely not consider a native Pipewire support implementation. Pipewire implements the Jack API. That is the correct API to be using for inter-application audio. And also is the correct API to be using for raw hardware access. Basically, Ardor is already doing it the correct way, going directly through the APIs. So why then also do it through Pipewire when you can just keep doing what you're already doing because Pipewire adds Jack and also support, it still works with what you're currently doing. What's the point here? And the answer is nope. Nothing changes on the Ardor side of things. This is why Pipewire is so great. There is no additional work that needs to be done. There's no porting work that needs to be done. There's no like developing specifically around Pipewire. You just keep doing what you are already doing and it just works. So let me know, when did you start using Pipewire? Or maybe if you're still on the fence for one reason or another, let me know why. Maybe you're having some weird Bluetooth issues. Maybe you're having some of those weird professional audio issues. I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and time to go, Jack. Maybe I don't finish that one.